What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. The Earthmaster here on the live stream uh, with an update video on this start of the work week. It is Monday, the 28th of February, 2022, about 11.56 a.m., just about noon out here along the west coast of California. Latest quake coming into the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 4.0 earthquake striking out here in the Indonesia region. We have seen quite a bit of uptick in earthquake activity along the um, the region over here of the Indonesia islands. Quite a bit of threes kicking up here. Uh, just remember, I have added the EMSC model agency uh, earthquake data on the earthquake 3D globe. So definitely showing quite a bit of activity there um, in that region of the world. Let's go ahead and check out uh, what the USGS has to say about it. Uh, they're not reporting anything, of course, above the 4.0 threshold, but there's definitely seen a lot of push here throughout the region of the uh, re area here, the Banda Sea westward. It seems like all seeing quite a bit of threes today. And uh, USGS reporting a few sevens here within the region as well, somewhat deep, at least one of those earthquakes somewhat deep over here around the Java Trench. Got to watch the Java Trench pretty closely. This area. Uh, I've been watching this over the past few months here, and it's been relatively quiet within this region, but uh, definitely building up quite a bit of stress here, no doubt, uh, on any given day. So quite a bit of the uptick here in the earthquake department along the Indonesia region, Banda Sea, westward to the Java Trench. Uh, back behind that, what do we got here? Not a whole lot here on the USGS map along the Solomon Islands, but we are seeing a little uptick here in the Tonga and the Kermadec Trench and New Zealand area. Let's go ahead and check out the Fiji area first, around the Tonga region, I guess. Pretty close, in between. Take your pick. Check these earthquakes out. A 4.6 and a 4.2 below 600 kilometers. Look at that, 608 and 604. That is some deep, deep movement taking place there in that area of the world. Right along the, uh, well, this area always sees quite a bit of deep movement, but uh, 600 kilometers, holy smokes, that is deep. Uh, a lot of times when we see that activity kick up, we do we definitely see a major uptick uh, in the surface quaking around the region, also over here towards the west. So got to pay attention here uh, throughout the day in this area, especially these these areas that really haven't seen too much movement. But uh, ultimately, the deeper activity as well, putting strain down here on this area of the plate, the Pacific plate, uh, where it kind of meets up there against the uh, well, the Hikarangi subduction zone, New Zealand area. So the Kermadec Trench. Seen some activity as well with a, uh, this one right here is pretty shallow, <laughs> really shallow, a 4.8 at 10 kilometers. Now the deep earthquake activity is way over here, just north of the North Island, New Zealand area. Uh, now this area, of course, the Hikarangi subduction zone extends down here. Uh, and of course, quite a few folks out there do know what this is all about, the, the uh, subduction zone. Um, Folks think that this area is definitely capable of producing a pretty significant sized earthquake. Just not a lot of historical data on uh, past, um, you know, full ruptures, past uh, large earthquakes here. So definitely got to watch it, though. We have seen quite a bit of swarming up here around the Hastings area into the Hawke's Bay region. So uh, there's the Hikarangi uh, Trace area. And, the, uh, of course, the subduction zone doesn't really show it here on the map, but uh, it's definitely within this area right here along this plate boundary. So the deep activity up here around the Bla Bay of Plenty... Uh, look at that, 447 kilometer deep earthquake uh, for a 4.4 and a 4.5 uh, in the, uh, well, it looks like the Bay of Plenty area. That's just a little on the odd side uh, for that deep, deep movement. I mean, that's really deep. Uh, I do want to check out and see what we got for historical data here around the New Zealand area. Of course, the um, legend here is going to show, looks like 4.5 and above. Um, it is in a region where we do see deeper movement. And got to remember, though, the subduction zone, right, extends underneath the surface over here, underneath this plate, uh, Pacific plate, diving down underneath. And therefore, we will see, ultimately, of course, large quakes, not only at the subduction zone level uh, towards the surface, but also down dip, downstream. And, of course, the further you go here to the west, the deeper it gets. And definitely looks like we have seen in the past around the Bay of Plenty area, um, some deep movement um, between the 4.5 and the 5.0 threshold. Looks like there has been some larger in that area of the world, uh, but uh, man, not a whole lot, huh? Definitely not a whole lot since about 1900 or so, far as the um, below the 300 kilometer mark. So, got to watch this area pretty closely there around the New Zealand area. As I mentioned, they have been seeing a little bit of swarming around the Hastings area in the Hawke's Bay region. 
Let's go ahead and check out the GeoNet model here. Let's see if we can uh, bring them up. I need to add them up here onto my top of my page because I will be uh, utilizing them uh, daily. So far as week and above, right? Uh, looks like the last one was yesterday, uh, 4.8 there on the Northern Island. Uh, let's go ahead and bring this down to the all uh, earthquakes here. And uh, definitely some earthquakes within the past couple hours or so, including some ones all over the uh, New Zealand area. Uh, specifically though, around the Hawks Bay area. Let me see uh, if I can get this keyed up here a little bit. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, please correct me. I haven't seen any, uh, haven't seen any uh, uh, corrections on this name. Hastings, Hawks Bay, uh, New Zealand area. We have been seeing a pretty good amount of swarming here uh, in the area, but it looks like that has since died down somewhat uh, in the area of the uh, Hastings area. A couple, uh, couple smaller quakes there in the low two range over the last couple hours. Most of it there on the North Island side, some of it down south, but uh, definitely getting in on uh, a lot of activity up north here. Let's check out the New Zealand or the uh, EMSC model here that does cover activity. Of course, we've seen that on the Earthquake 3D globe, all the threes and whatnot kicking up here in the region of New Zealand. Stand by for just a second here while I get this keyed up. And uh, well, <clears throat> there's some See if I can get this to key up a little bit here. I need to re uh, reset this to where I want to view it. See, these guys aren't showing a whole lot of threes over here, but on the Earthquake 3D globe, uh, definitely coming in. Not for sure why they're not. Um, there's that uh, little deep earthquake swarm up there, North Island, into the Bay Area. These guys also reporting a couple fours there. 4.4 and a 4.5 so either way definitely got to watch this area pretty closely uh, with all the subsequent deep movement over here and uh, hold on a second here I got this window that still just wants to pop up for whatever reason anyway uh, the deeper movement right up here in Fiji right right around the Tonga area uh, just what I was talking about here how, how we get subsequent shallow earthquake activity and, and activity downstream nonetheless uh, when we see this deeper movement and that holds true with the uh, the uh, earthquake activity that we're seeing there on the map. We've seen those two deep ones first up here in the Fiji area, and then uh, subsequently followed up here uh, a couple hours later in the southern part of this region, this trench here, Kermadec Trench and the New Zealand area. So like I said, uh, this may not be over as far as the subsequent uh, activity down south. Got to watch out pretty closely. Uh, but you see, you get the dynamics of how these deep movement earthquakes definitely affect uh, further regions here south in this area. Okay, South America. What do we got over here around the Chile area? Just offshore, uh, right into the Peru-Chile Trench, uh, getting some some movement here right around where that uh, 9.5 struck, right? 9.5, I believe, back in 1960. I know someone uh, mentioned that in the comments. Uh, but yeah, there's... a. Uh, definitely a little swarm of movement taking place here there was 5.7 there last night and it looks like uh, some aftershock activity no further recent movement above the 4.0 threshold uh, since then but uh, still got to watch this area pretty closely there around the uh, um, the Chile area some deeper movement up north uh, around the Santiago area and a pretty deep earthquake up here into the Peru Chile trench at uh, 129 kilometers for that 4.5 what do we got here in Puerto Rico? Let's drop it down to the all magnitudes here so we can see a little bit about what's going on here. And these guys uh, yeah, kind of dying off a little bit, staying steady around 25 to 30 earthquakes a day, it seems like, around the southwest edge of the Puerto Rico area. I've seen a little bit of uh, movement up here, migration up to the north, to the west side. Uh, a couple small earthquakes and some activity around the Virgin Islands area. Looks like uh, around the uh, Roadtown area. 3.9 at 136 kilometers, somewhat deep here into this uh, region called the, uh, what is that? An Agata Gap? Uh, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. If not, definitely slaughter it. Hopefully I didn't slaughter it. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Atlantic Ocean, one earthquake here overnight into the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a 5.5. Of course, shallow earthquake activity expected here in this region of the of the world. Um, some movement down in the, to the South Sandwich Islands area as well. Looks like that one into the subduction zone here at the southern end 
a 5.2 at uh, 35 kilometers. Let's see what else we got here. We still got that swarming we got to watch up here off the coast of Japan as well. Some of that activity kicking up uh, earlier this morning. Uh, looks like a couple, uh, at least a five and a couple fours kicking up overnight into this area. Uh, pretty shallow movement as well, around 10 kilometers into the area of the Kurokamchaka Trench. Japan Trench sits down here to the south. So uh, that's a little, little hot spot of activity today and overnight. Uh, west Coast, what do we got going on out here in the West Coast? Some activity up here around the Cascadia subduction zones. Kind of odd, haven't seen any trimmer ramping up here either in recent days. Uh, there was no trimmer last night along the Cascadia. We'll see what it looks like a little bit later tonight. But uh, a couple couple ones, in, including a 2.7 off the coast there into the uh, uh, Pacific Plate and the Gorda Plate uh, boundary, it looks like, close to the Mendocino Triple Point Junction area. That's, uh, and then some shallow earthquake, or uh, some deeper earthquake, I should say, inland into the southern end of the Cascadia Megathrust area. 18.3 uh, kilometers for that subduction zone quake, a 1.5. Uh, a little bit of activity stretching over here along the eastern part of the Sierra Nevada. Of course, Mount Lassen sits down here. Definitely a lot of uh, volcanic activity within this region historically. Um, but uh, this one here, 2.3, 15.9 kilometers there into the uh, Sierra Nevada mountains. A little bit of activity picking up through the Intermountain West region again today, it looks like, uh, including a 2.7 there in Utah. A little bit of swarming out here by the uh, Cedar Utah area as well. Yellowstone National Park is showing a little bit of movement. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview. Let's see if I can pop these guys up here. Okay, there we go. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Yeah, at least one earthquake overnight. You can kind of see that well-defined signature here uh, showing up on all the stations. Let me pop this up a little bit closer so you can see what I'm uh, talking about. This is going to be this well-defined earthquake. It looks like a little bitty microquake there as well. Um, kind of looks like it's centered more towards the... Uh, well, right, right around the center part here. It looks like maybe around Borehole, it looks like. Uh, looking at the borehole area it does show some subsequent uh, uh, much more uh, weaker earthquake activity but definitely microquakes there but uh, a little bit uh, more active than the other stations are showing so pretty certain that uh, epicenter right there is uh, right there over the borehole area looks like that's on the map as well uh, looks like 1.9 kicking up there so i got to watch this area as well just for uh swarms it's been a while since we have a had a significant earthquake swarm it kind of comes and goes and i think we had a little one here oh a few days ago maybe a week or so ago in this region but it didn't last long Let's see what we got here for the eastern crest of sierra nevada here in the southern part of the state a little bit of activity outside of long or the uh, long valley super volcano and the ridge crest region all just kind of I don't know, just looks just a little dull in the earthquake department for the most part here over the past few days or so. Uh, Southern California kind of dying off as well. Just one earthquake here in the red circle over the last hour around the Redlands area. Uh, but kind of cluttered up here right against the uh, San Andreas Fault and the San, uh, San Jacinto Fault zone. These uh, uh, little faults, I shouldn't say little, they're pretty lengthy, all kind of run up into the uh, San Andreas Fault. Uh, some movement south of the border as well, including a 3.3 and a little smaller earthquake here, a 2.5 in the Baja region. Texas, Oklahoma, older earthquake activity it looks like. Um, well, some movement today it looks like. a Little little small microquakes in the region of Pecos, Texas and the uh, Oklahoma City area. Eastern part of the country, all pretty quiet. And uh, let's check out the Canada map, see if these folks are reporting anything new here in the region of Canada. And uh, yeah, a little bit way up here around the Alaska region. Well, actually, it looks like it's just yeah, a little bit into the Canada region, the Yukon area, most of it there around the Alaska area. Some sm very small uh, red circle earthquakes there indicating that microquake movement. Uh, last earthquake shows a 2.0 uh, earlier today in the Alaska region. Rest of Canada, pretty quiet. Don't see any red circles there. Most of this movement here from last week or even late or uh, earlier i should say earlier in the month all right folks uh, i'm gonna jump off here uh, like i say trimmer map last night was pretty calm there's the map from last night we'll see if this changes a little bit later on this evening 
uh, with that subsequent uh, earthquake activity we're kind of seeing off the uh, off the northern California coast there so all right guys have a good day we'll chat to you a little bit later on this evening uh, with the update video uh, for tonight all right peace out folks